Hey everyone, welcome to Walk & Talk. Now they say that money isn't everything, but a lack of it certainly is. And the same can be said about the flurry of technological advances that are happening in today's current camera market. Now do you really need a 50 megapixel sensor? Mm, probably not, but an 11 megapixel one may seriously hamper what you're trying to create. Do you really need a $5,000 lens? Well, that depends, but I'm guessing that is not going to give you the results that you think a $5,000 lens is going to give you. Now, this is not to say that this video is about how tech specs don't specifically matter, and they do, but what I'm saying is that we often get so fixated on them, we can't see the forest for the trees. And I often get asked, what is the best camera? And the answer is, best at what? You need to know your art so that you know your tools. So let's talk tech, let's talk when it matters, and let's talk when it doesn't. But we're not talking about anything until I get some coffee. So what's more important than tech specs, you may ask? Well, just about everything. You see, if you want to create iconic images that are timeless, that are memorable, that move people, then you have to consider your subject. Some of the most iconic images in history have been all about what's happened in front of that camera and not even about what camera was used. I had a producer once say to me that you want to shoot people that you can't look away from. And so you need to consider what you're shooting far before you consider everything else. Get really good at understanding a moment in time that you need to capture and what's happening in that moment or who is in that moment. The second thing, and this is really just for the video folk, which is about audio. Now audio is 80% of the image. If you look at any major feature film, the audio and the sound design is so involved and so detailed that that's what's driving you to that image. And if you spend all your time worrying about the physical image or the visual image and not about the audio, recording good audio, then no one's even going to watch five seconds of what you're shooting. The third thing is art direction. Now when we consider some of the most iconic directors in history, people like Stanley Kubrick or Wes Anderson, these people were functionally art directors. They knew how to create a scene that looked so good that you didn't even need to turn a camera on or turn lights on. It looked amazing to the human eye. We say the same thing about fashion and editorial photographers. People like Guy Baudin, the same thing. Or the images, where he placed the people, what clothing they were wearing, and where the clothing was in respect to the environment they were in and things like color theory. Do you know color theory and how important that is to creating a really good image? Art direction is almost everything to creating a great image. The fourth thing is lighting. Now you obviously need to know the difference between soft lighting and hard lighting. The direction of the lighting. These things are all very, very important. Once you've done all your legwork with the first three, you need to be able to light it properly so you bring out all the advantages of your great art direction and what's happening and knowing even sometimes just where to place the camera in the angle of the sun uh, will make the hugest difference. Uh, and then the next thing is lenses. So no, when I'm talking lensing, I'm not talking about like, you know, expensive lenses versus cheap lenses. Uh, I think that's an irrelevant or kind of a relevant discussion. Really we're talking about the effects of a lens. So the focal length and how sharp it is towards the corners. So if you're shooting architecture for example, you're going to need to have a lens that is very, very sharp with low distortion to the edge. And if you're shooting portrait, you want something that's milky and warm and soft. Um, not always, but these are the lens effects that you need to consider and they're going to have a huge impact on the image. And then last, once you've considered all of these things, okay, now we can talk tech. I'm going to say something that's going to sound like a contradiction to my original point, and that is megapixels matter, but they don't matter in the way you think they matter. A neophyte may be led to believe that the higher the number, the better the product. And so a 50 megapixel sensor may be better than a 24, which is still better yet than a 16. But it doesn't quite work that way, and Sony demonstrates this in their s &R product line. For example, the Sony S7 is all about sensitivity, and the Sony R7 is about resolution. And the sensor design and the sensor tech in those two cameras is drastically different. You have a fixed amount of real estate, and so you have to decide what you want that real estate to do. And in the case of sensitivity, this might be something for someone who doesn't have access to lighting or maybe doing documentary work uh, where you need uh, low light power. 
wear resolution is for someone who might be doing like really high detailed fashion or skin work, for example, and portraits, that type of thing, where you have a huge control of the lighting. So it's important to understand where resolution matters and where it doesn't. And you might be paying for something that you simply just don't need. The second thing where resolution does matter is when you're trying to make something seem a little bit more organic. And this is really important, again, when it comes to like skin tones and fashion and beauty work, because you can't make something round from something square. Photosites are indeed square. And if you have photosites that are too large, uh, as in uh, lower resolution, then you're just trying to make something that seems more pixelated. But if you can make smaller photo sites, you're gonna lose in dynamic range and you're going to lose in your sensitivity. But what you're going to gain is something that makes round things seem more round and more organic. And this actually downsizes all the way down to your mobile device on Instagram. So it's important to consider what are you shooting, what are your needs, and get the tech that matches those specific needs. Let me tell you a story. See, a uh, director of photography is hiring his first camera assistant. The first AC comes to the interview and the DP is looking over his CV and says, yeah, everything looks great. I have one last question for you. And that is, have you ever dropped a camera or flashed a roll of film? And the first AC, wanting to impress, says, nope, you know, proudly, I have never done either of those things. And the DP says to him, sorry, come back when you have more experience. And you see, this is the pro reality. Good gear is about being built tough, not necessarily indestructible, but built solid to handle the rigors of daily use. And so what we're looking for in our products is not necessarily the tech that's inside, but how easy is that thing to use and how much can it take the abuse of daily use? And that's the difference between pro and consumer electronics. And what we're also looking for is the user interface. So time is money, and I don't want to be going through multiple menu systems uh, to be able to get a function that I use all the time. And so you'll see things like Canon and Fuji, which I think have very intuitive user interface systems, and a camera like the Arri Alexa, which is the most in-demand cinema camera in the world, is quite possibly the most simple and easy camera to understand. So when it comes to a pro environment and a pro situation, having something that is intuitive and robust makes all the difference in the world. If you're new to tech, let me give you a little primer on RAW versus Codex. RAW simply means that the sensor data is being processed by your computer and not by the camera, whereas a processed codec is done all in camera to save time and speed and money and all these sorts of things. Now, not everyone, I would say not most people, uh, have unlimited amount of drive space or post-production time to manipulate and process raw images. Now, this is much more easier, of course, with photo cameras, but even people like Reuters and other news agencies are no longer accepting anything but JPEGs. So the need for cameras to produce really high quality JPEGs are very, very important. So just because your camera has a raw output doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to use it. I also find in the video world that I prefer a ProRes image out of an Ari Alexa more than a raw image out of a RED camera, for example. I get an image that I actually like better and I can begin editing it immediately without having to transcode it. So when it comes to codecs, yes, RAW is great, but think about how much you're actually going to use it. When thinking about your next camera purchase, I want you to remember that the tech specs you could be obsessing over could just be a shell game. Don't let the numbers distract you from what it takes to make a really great image. If the tech matters to you, then be hard on yourself. Ask yourself why you really want these things. Is it just the cool factor or does it really matter? And I also want to remind you that some of the most iconic photographs in history have been grainy, low resolution, and sometimes not even correctly exposed. So your tech checklist should look more like you asking yourself, does this help me tell great stories, explore my art, document my life, and take me on new adventures. Because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. And that's all I have because I am out of coffee. <laughs>